I have waited far, far too long for this. And the reason why is things just kept happening and happening and happening and happening over and over and over and over and over again. And to every single person that follows this channel knows we spend the spring, we spend the summer, we spend six straight months talking about indoor and arena football, and now it is November. It's been three months, three long months since the NAL championship ended. It's been three long months, and finally, it is time to talk. Finally, it's time to get the words out, time to get all the truths out, trying to get all the naysayers out, trying to get everything out. This may be long. I don't know how long this is going to be because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, one league I will not even mention is uh, the United Indoor Football League, that, that fall league that has teams from other leagues in it and teams that have been revived and you know, stuff like that. There's just nothing to talk about there, nothing to talk about. Some team, like a team has already folded, I think, and you know teams are playing games, yada, yada, yada. Typical Tier 3 behavior with a league like that. Plus, it's fall. You, we should be playing in soccer plexus in fall. I'm sorry, you know, for a tier three league like that. So, first things first. Um, you know, CIF is no more. It is dead. You have the AWFC, the American West Football Conference. That league is dead. They are only, well, they are dead. The, all three of these leagues are dead. So. This is misleading. This part of the slide is misleading. But they are all dead. AWFC, Oregon High Desert Storm, dead. Wenatchee, honestly, still up in the air on that. But South Florida, Las Vegas, the AIFA in general, dead. Dead. And we'll talk about, you know, why, you know, as we get into it. You know, again, three leagues are gone, so this one's a little bit more accurate as far as the title of the slide. You know, so the CIF ceased last month it's been over a month it's been six weeks since the cif died and you know you go back you take that history back all the way in the early 2010s you know with the old um cif league that league has been around for well over 10 years and it's gone technically so Every team besides Gillette is going to the AFL. We'll talk about the AFL. It's gonna the AFL portion is gonna take up a good chunk of this video, so I'm just gonna be real with y'all. Gillette's assets. Steven Titus can't own two AFL teams, so he's off, you know selling, trying to sell off the assets for Gillette. They've been up in the air for quite a while, for about two months now. Team's not gonna play in 2024. They could have been able to play in 2024. Had they been able to move to maybe Casper or somewhere else in Wyoming, but instead Gillette will not be playing in 2024. The AWFC, again, they were down to three teams. They lost the Idaho Horsemen to the NAL, and we'll talk about what the NAL has done. And again, Oregon is dead. There's, you know, again, there's another Oregon team that the AFL, this is that's basically where that team is going to go. Wenatchee Valley, I'm not sure yet because, you know, despite the fact that they haven't said anything, they haven't said they're dead or anything either. So the Las Vegas Kings, you know, South Florida Thunder, they got left behind. Las Vegas has been doing their own thing, you know, with like the um, the 7-on-7 seven seven league, the AF7L thing. South Florida has gone through some stuff with their um, head coach and stuff like that. So both might be dead. Who knows? They'll probably say something in, in you know the near future anyway. But right now, I'm just gonna say the case is closed on all of these teams for the moment. So the IFL has made the biggest additions of the offseason. You see the 2024 map 
Not pictured as another expansion team, but we'll talk about the expansion team in a moment. You have two teams that left the NAL in Jacksonville, who will be in the East, and San Antonio, who will go in the loaded West Conference. So, you know, it's going to be one hell of a 2024 season for the IFL as, you know, free agency is open, guys getting signed, guys getting traded. You know, Drew Powell is not in Arizona anymore. Dalton Sneed is in Arizona now. You know, so there, there's plenty of guys that have been signed. Plenty of things have been going on as far as, you know, player signings. We don't really focus on that too much here. But, you know, again, I did pose that question up in the community tab like a couple weeks ago when that trade was announced. It was a crazy trade. Also, Ramon Atkins, you know, too. You know, there's, there's a lot of guys that you would signed. A lot of guys that you would signed and re-signed and everything. So, go, so, guys that are watching that, you know, know of this channel and know what this channel tries to do, go ahead and get that paper. Get what you need to get noticed because you're going to get noticed. I guarantee it. You know, when an IFL game is on YouTube or, you know, presumably a couple games on CBSSN this upcoming season. So, yeah, I feel hit it out the park with these two additions. Again, Jacksonville's going to be in the East, San Antonio in the West. The schedule, once again, it's been steadily increasing to 16 games over the past couple of years. Last year was weird because it wasn't 16 games. I think it was supposed to be 16 games. But again, arena availability is arena availability. So, you know, things are going to start March the 16th. And they're going to end on July the 21st. And the playoffs will go until the second week of August, presumably. Might be the third. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. You know, there's certain interviews out there with Todd Tryon already. You know, how everything's getting set up and everything. So Massachusetts and Sioux Falls, they're going to play a game in Fargo, North Dakota. As Bismarck may still be able to come back. They're in negotiations, both in you know, Bismarck, Fargo, and other arenas. So Columbus is more than likely dead. Um, again, both are not listed among the IFL website members. They're not listed there. So Columbus has probably finally gotten the boot. Um, one big coaching thing, though, you know, and, you know, again, it's coinciding with San Antonio's move is that Tom Anas brought himself not only just himself, but a great cast of guys with him. There's also a nice podcast that he and my boy Ralph Judkins host, you know, branded. So go ahead. I'll, I'll try and link that somewhere. Brought a great cast with him. It's going to be a great season for San Antonio. I can feel it. Um, I don't want to make predictions right now. It's too early. It's far too early. Arizona, presumably more than likely because of, you know, the Suns and the Mercury, they're going to go to get the Glendale in the Desert Diamond Arena where the Coyotes uh, play, you know, the, uh, the Arizona Coyotes they used to play over there. You know, they're going to move to Glendale for to the 2024 season. And, uh, you know, another team that had to figure out where they wanted to go was Massachusetts. They, you know, there was all sorts of things going on internally with Massachusetts, but they were able to figure it out and go to Lowell in the Sanka Center. So Massachusetts will stay in the state, and they will play in Lowell, where, you know, where UMass Lowell resides, I believe, I think. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Arenas are done. And also, Bay Area, they're not going to leave San Jose. They didn't leave. They're just going to stay put. So the IFL expansion team for 2025 is going to be in Fishers, Indiana, near Indianapolis at the Fishers event center team name will come later everything else will come later we'll talk about this team as the season goes on you know in 2024 so indianapolis great place i believe that's where an um echl team a hockey team you know and that's a that's another thing that i feel has been touting you know remember tulsa has a hockey ownership group in place you know the Dallas Stars are very much involved with Frisco. Um, so, yeah, the hockey affiliations, top tier, top tier. So what about the NAL? Well, 
you see you see the eight logos on the screen here you see the midwest tinge that they have truly a national sort of league now and they look much better from where they were in 2023 they look much better with the additions of omaha with the addition of sioux city a team that came back you know in north texas that had been working to come back working the right way similar to how bismarck is probably going to do it the flying aces who came out of complete nowhere idaho who ran the AWSC, won the last AWSC championship, Colorado, the Spartans out in Loveland, and of course, you know, Topeka, the Tropics. And Carolina is the only team that got the stay in the NAL. So they were the only team that stayed. You know, so the league will keep the rebound nets. Iron Man is gone. Two men in motion is going to be a thing. So this is going to look more like CIF games. So these games will still be three hours. <laughs> you know, they'll still be at least three hours. I can guarantee you that. So, so the schedule was released the day after Oklahoma's addition into the league. Most teams will play either ten games plus a seat preseason foe, or twelve games. You know, Carolina's also going to play a midseason foe in Peach State. So five of the eight teams so far have a you know, you know, out of league team confirmed um that's going to be interesting to see again these are some cif things that got put over into the al iron man football is gone i'm glad about that there was no reason for iron man in the first place i'm just being real with y'all it's a gimmicky type thing that you know i just didn't like you know the rebound nets are here to stay as long as the rebound nets get used more this year i'll be fine I'll be, I'll be cool with the NAL. I am planning to go to not just a Frisco Fighters game in 2024. I'm going. I'm trying to find a way to get to that Jacksonville game on May 11th because it's in the afternoon. I could get there, come back at like 5 o'clock, you know, or at a, not 5 o'clock, like 6, 7 o'clock. You know, that way it's not too dark. Whenever... The North Texas Bulls release their times. I am going to find a way to get to a North Texas Bulls game as well. I'm tentatively will talk. I'll talk about you know my little excursion, you know, in April later on. But that's 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 a long ways away to talk about you know some things that I'm planning for 2024. So Peach State, they're going to be playing Carolina in the middle of the season. We'll talk more about Peach State in a second. Chris Siegfried. He's with West Texas, and we know where West Texas ended up. And Todd Walking Horse, who was the CIF commission at one point, you know, the CIF had a lot of commissioners over the last couple of years. He's taken over that role. Free agency's begun. Players are getting signed. Teams are getting their rosters, their coaches, and everything else together. So everything is coming together for the NAL. Bounce back was immaculate. That's what I can say about the NAL for 2024. But now, the big one, the AFL. You see it? You see it? Can you believe it? I can try. I can try. I can try to believe it. You see our four teams out west, the Billings Outlaws, of course, came over from the CIF. They were the first team to come over. Rapid City, the Marshals, the Washington Wolfpack, the Oregon Black Bears out in Salem. Again, Salem somehow getting an arena. Don't don't know how. There's literally no arenas in Salem, but they're going to try and make it work out there anyway. The Iowa Rampage, who, again, there, there's a, um, there was a, you know, sort of thing happening. Topeka, you know, kind of split, you know, the AIF team up. So there's technically two. You know, and one of, and the other is going to move to like Council Bluffs, I think. It, it's a weird, it's a weird story. But again, we have the Iowa Rampage, which is where the beef are. They're they're close to the beef area. You know, Salina, of course, Southwest Kansas, and the formerly independent CIF team for like two days, Wichita ICT Regulators, of course, in the Central Division. You have a surprising addition of the Georgia Force, which is insane to me. 
Of course, the two teams that defected from the NAL, the, the Orlando Predators and the West Texas Desert Hawks, not the Walbirds, but the Desert Hawks. And then the Louisiana Voodoo, who are playing in Lake Charles with a horrid looking logo. I mean, that logo looks absolutely absurd to me. You have the Minnesota Myth, who are going to be in the East. They have no arena yet. Yeah, Lee Hutton's wife owns the team, but who cares about that? They don't have an arena. The Nashville Cats, they're back. The Philadelphia Soul, you see that terrible looking logo? That's not the Soul's logo. What is that? They don't have an arena either. In fact, there's been no discussions. In fact, Jaws ain't coming. Jaws ain't coming to save this team. He said no. And then the Albany Firebirds, no. Not the Empire, but the Firebirds. They are back in MPP Arena, led by Jeff LeBac. And, you know, there's also some controversies yet again involving who's going to use this field. Ron Tredico, please say something about that, please, my friend. Say something about that, please. Because there's there's an issue with the, with a field this time. It's saying to me that we can, have, we can still have an issue about a field... When this team, you know, when this area just lost an arena football team in like June, July, you know, it, during the NAL season, you guys got lucky in Albany. I know there's a passionate Albany fan that is very happy to see the Firebirds back. But at the same time, you see how there's 16 markets supposed to be more than that there isn't you see how there's some markets that are burned here and you're like why are these cif teams here well the cif said that we're going to merge with the afl because we can't we can't compete in the nal and we can't compete in the ifl we damn sure can't compete in the ifl we can't go we can't get it in the nal we, we could have keep in mind these these specific five teams here, you know, Billings, Rapid City, Salina, Southwest Kansas, and ICT, they all could have gone to the NAL. They all could have. And maybe finally, you know, make that NAL-CIF merger a reality. West Texas and the Preds, you know, I have a feeling. Because Chris Siegfried is now the head coach of West Texas, I feel like you know, there was something there. I feel like there was something there that something happened along the way, you know, and things were just not going well towards the end of Siegfried's tender in the NAL anyway. The Preds, the issue has been known for quite a while now that they did not like the direction the NAL was going. So the NAL was pretty, fract was pretty fractured at the end of 23 stable stabilized very much stabilized the afl on the other hand looks lost there are markets that have been burned there are teams without arenas there are a there's a travel only team here and 10 games 10 games along with not just the 10 games keep in mind i haven't even put this stuff i haven't even put some of this stuff in with the whole you know with the whole neutral site a arena bowl and you know games in vegas a game in minnesota championship game in minnesota there's also the chicago rush out in rockford no not actually chicago not even i don't think that's even close but there's also a, an arizona bandits team that's somehow gotten named they're not playing in 2024 so that's close to where the AFL said they were going to go with, you know, 20 teams and, you know, somewhere to like 24 and, you know, the numbers were flipping, flopping and all sorts of things. You know, guys are being signed, head coaches and owners are starting to be named, but who cares about all that? There's a problem here. There's a massive problem here. There are teams that didn't get an AFL team. There, there's markets that got burned here. Boise is kind of obvious because there was already a team in the area, you know, there probably wasn't an arena available in Boise. Denver, same thing. Don't think the AFL guys could afford that. Do you think Travell Gaines and Lee Hutton know what they're doing? 
I don't think so. I'm sorry. I don't think so. And with the way the league has been doing things on social media, absolutely unacceptable type behavior. That is tier three behavior. If you want to see some of those tweets, I'm not going to put them up here for fear out of myself. But some of these tweets, these are not the type of tweets you want to make as a, you know, league that wants to be respected, that says they want to be the top dog when you're not even close to that. You know, you have a Denver market that is not there. Because again, the NAL has both of those markets already covered up. Cincinnati? No way that was going to happen. Not a way, There's no way that was going to happen. Bakersfield? Yeah, no. Austin? Absolutely not. Tallahassee? Oh, wait. You think in Tallahassee, you're thinking like, oh, well, maybe maybe it's the TFA Storm or something like that. No, it was it was good old Alton Walker and the Capital City Cyclones trying to get into the AFL. Even they couldn't get in. You know how bad it is when Alton Walker, an absolute con artist of him on his own right, can't even get in. St. Louis? Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. I mean... That market has been burned a couple times, you know, by the bandits, you know, like an AAL team. So there's a lot wrong here where I don't even want to, you know, I don't even want to fathom what what kind of 2024 season we are going to get from this league. Because I'm telling you right now, the way some of this stuff is looked. I don't think there's going to be a 2025. I'm sorry. And, you know, you, you can say, oh, well, you're just being, you know, a bit cynical and, you know, you're being a bit too hypocritical and all sorts of, you're being too hypercritical and blah, 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 blah. No. There's a reason these CIF teams are here. They don't have the money. There's a reason there's a travel team here. They don't have the money for an arena. There's a reason that seven markets did not get a team. The AFL couldn't, you know, couldn't even say, oh, well, well, we worked really, really hard to get these arenas. I, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. I feel like, again, a lot of these markets were blindsided into the fact that, oh, we're getting an arena team. What? This this news this was new to me. What what do you mean? So don't go there. Don't say you're the best league. You're the you're the top dog for 2024. You are not. You are not. You're you're at least tier three right now. You're tier three. You've engaged in tier three behavior. You have tier three rumblings going on we'll keep up as much as we can with the afl throughout the 2024 season they're going to be one of the main leagues we talk about as we all know of course because that's this is this is the afl this feels like college football in a way in which now there are two big dogs and then there's a bunch of little dogs running around that's what it feels like to me. The IFL pretty much set to be the SEC right now. NAL, honestly, they look Big Ten-like right now. Clear number two. Everybody else? The other three Power Five conferences and, you know, in the, at the group of five type leagues. That's what it looks like. But anyway, the AIF, let's talk about the AIF. You know, there's a couple teams here that, you know, are looking a little interesting. You know, um, you know, you have um, the River City Rage again. This team got moved around. Um, so, yeah, they're not playing this year. Um, Beaumont isn't playing this year either. I had to cover up this um, helmet with their logo because um, they're not playing this year, technically. They, they're doing like a um, they're, do, they're doing like an exhibition type thing, but honestly, right now, who cares about that? But you have the Albany River Gators, the Flint River Gators, if you want to say that, Amarillo, the Venom are back, you know, 
Cedar Rapids is back. Columbus is going to head this lead. The Corpus Christi Tritons, the Harrisburg Stampede, the Mississippi Raiders somehow are in this league. And again, River City, um, you know, they're so River City, yeah. I, again, Coralville is where they will go, actually. Um, so the Mississippi Raiders, again, they were one of the teams that were one of the big dogs, the AIFA. Basically, that killed them off. That killed the AAFA off with Mississippi's addition. Um, again, River City, they're going to move to Coralville, Iowa. The Rampage are going to be in Council Bluffs. So they'll kick off in 2025. Beaumont, the Renegades, um, they do have a logo. Forget about what I said there. They're going to kick off in 2025 as well. They might get an exhibition in 2024. Ford Arena, they're still kind of wishy-washy with them. West Virginia was supposed to be here, but we'll talk about where they are in a second. And again, Albany, um, Georgia, they're going to be the River Gators. They've had scouting reports, combines, tryouts, press conferences on the USS Lexington. Remember when the AI, when you remember when the Arena Football Association said they do something on like a military ship? At least the AIF did that. So seven teams are going to play in 2024. Most teams have eight regular season games against like two or three other teams in the league. So it's not even a very good schedule, but it's whatever. Amarillo seems like they're going to have a local CBS Paramount Plus deal. That's the only other thing that's really been confirmed to talk about for the AF right now. So there's that. Um, and speaking of... Our friends over in West Virginia, they have moved to the AAL too. And you see a couple of faces that are very familiar here. You know, Peach State, they're in the AAL too. The Dallas Falcons, yeah, they did not like the direction of the AIFA, and they moved over. The Waco Tornadoes are still here somehow. That's actually the West Texas Buccaneers over there in the corner right here. They are here. The Carolina Predators, who have been playing, you know, They've been playing, but you know they haven't really done anything. They're they're in the AL too as well, and then the Texas Hot Shots are in this league now. They they had some place to go. They're here, so the AL had that Texas idea a couple of years ago, like three or four years ago. They're trying to do it again with you know Waco, West Texas, and the Texas Hot Shots, along with the Dallas Falcons, who are not in Dallas. They are in Sulphur Springs. Remember, Carolina. In addition, that's an addition. Peach State, very good addition. That makes the AL to at least 12 to 13 teams, 12, 13, 14 teams right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out where the others are. You know, I'm not sure what the status of the other seven teams are right now, but who cares right now? So basically, there was a conflict with West Virginia. The Miners were supposed to be in the a uh, the AIF, they backed out. Josh Resignalo said, "I'm going to Tucson," so he's gone to Tucson. So the miners they wanted to go with a lower budget. They wanted to go lower, but then it seemed like West Michigan had recruited them over. And we'll talk about what West Michigan's been doing in a moment. So West, so West Virginia. You know, was in the GLAA maybe for like, maybe like two seconds. Officially, maybe not. Maybe they weren't even in it at all. But they ended up joining the AL two instead. So, you know, it's kind of been a weird season because, again, the rumor was is that you know they left the AF to go to the to the Great Lakes Arena Alliance or the Great Lakes Arena Football League or whatever you want to call it. But that wasn't really confirmed. That was kind of a thing that just kind of got circulated. But we do know that West Virginia is here in the AAL too. And again, players are currently being signed and stuff like that right now. So, and then the TAL. So you have the stuff about the TAL. Fifth and six teams later, eight game schedule, Iowa Woo. Teams have been very quiet. And then finally the, the Great Lakes, you know, stuff. So you see that. 
West Virginia, I mean, not West Virginia, West Michigan, 